Hello, thanks for joining. So it's bang on uh, three o'clock, so uh, let's start immediately. Uh, my name is JP, Jean-Pierre Berst, and I've got the chance to uh, make the introduction. So on Ipsos Switzerland VHALF, welcome. Um, today's webinar is part of a series of point of view we've initiated last year. Um, so far, we've covered topics as diverse as the power of leveraging distinctive brand assets, some digital and physical shopper fundamentals, why we started to understand that unfortunately the pandemic would not leave us alone, the importance of empathy uh, while interacting with consumers or some lessons learned uh, when it comes to communicating around Christmas time. So I'm just mentioning this that whenever you would be interested to get access to those previous webinars, don't hesitate to contact us or to check on our website. But back to uh, today's session, the topic we've prepared for you is how to activate your consumer targets in their digital environment. In terms of logistics, uh, we've prepared for you a session for around 45 minutes. Uh, it will include uh, some Q&A session at the end, so don't hesitate to start typing your questions at any time in the usual chat box. Next. So to guide us through today, um, uh, we've brought uh, three great speakers, uh, three experts in their uh, respective fields. Uh, so you've got Aurélie, one of our uh, social uh, intelligence and analytic experts, Marion Anne, who is leading our market strategy and understanding practice, and Joanne, a talented manager of our creative excellence service line. Next, please. So let me set the scene. Um, and introduce you a bit the topic. So why did we select uh, this business question for you? Well, that's quite obvious simply because we hear it a lot from all of you as a hot topic um, and therefore uh, we've decided to proceed. So indeed, uh, and as you may know, uh, media investments are continuously shifting more and more in favor of mobile and digital channels. Uh, social platforms are busy reinventing themselves to tap into the rise of e-commerce spending. One third more or less of the online spend now goes to social and after a drop of investments at the beginning of the pandemic, digital budgets are back to their pre-pandemic growth. So since few months we see as well mobile and digital budget have accelerated rate growth. Also, there's a slower recovery across traditional media. The rate of decline continues to improve across all media. So that's one aspect of it, but we are also hearing from you, our dear valued partners, lots of questions and comments like, well, we observe corporations piloting a 100% online spending model with good successes in various countries. We are hearing quite a lot the Nordics or even uh, countries like Brazil. We've got other companies who are keep uh, speaking about a pretty classic 50-50 split uh, between digital and traditional media. Uh, and uh, they just tell us that they could not reach, as we all know, uh, all the usual targets when we go to uh, digital uh, approaches. And some large groups who are also kindly sharing with us the fact that they had to come back to a pretty classic strategy, as unfortunately or fortunately for them, uh, it was not proven to be effective in the markets or the categories where they operate. So this is a first set of discussions related to what media investments may look like post-COVID, but there's also quite some discussions around questions like should we proceed with a mass market uh, communication strategy? Should we keep leverage classic brand ambassadors uh, or celebrities? Should we go with more micro-targeted approaches with micro-influencers and the ability to generate a more authentic engagement with their audience? Lots of good questions happening in our current pandemic accelerated context. So now, some first answers for you. We at Ipsos, uh, we believe that lots of fundamentals remains important, that delivering the right message to the right people at the right moment has never been more important. This is where Aurélie and Marion will first speak about how we could better define who your audiences are, how we can generate much more powerful segmentations these days than ever, how we can better activate these consumer segments. And then as a second part, Joanne uh, will take uh, us through which messages when it comes to really the activation and communication 
uh, could be considered um, and how celebrities and other influencers can help. So thank you. Aurélie, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre. And you're right, very nice introduction indeed. In this uncertain context, but it overall accelerates, huh? you got it. Should we continue to take the time to segment, huh? to be sure to stay on top of things, to be relevant and precise in our micro-targeting plan? But I think that my own, what can we do to be sure, you know, to make sure that we connect efficiently? Thank you already for this uh, relevant question those days. Uh, so yes, it's important to have this fresh vision of consumers uh, of their needs. And now this is all about connecting the dots with efficiency between consumers and a marketing activation in a more and more complex environment. A survey alone is not enough. There is a limited scope, uh, a limited time frame if we only ask questions to consumer. A digital perspective is not sufficient. This is mostly descriptive. So what we need is combining both a survey and digital behaviors as well. And we connect the dots. We build a bridge between what consumers do and how to really activate this. This allows you to not only define your targets as a classical segmentation would do, but also to address your targets through personalized media and messages. So next, please. The who, so the consumer, is in the middle of our approach, at the center of everything. So we combine survey-based need information with observational digital data. So you can move and we can move with you beyond behaviors and link the, them sorry, with deeper human insight. So we connect what people do by adding why people do what they do. The who in the middle, so the consumer in the middle, in the link between survey and observation data. But now the question is, how does it work? So concretely, uh, what we do is we create a lookalike model. So we have the survey uh, that you can see with, OK, we have segments, we have information on each segment, etc. Uh, and what we do is we create a lookalike model, what you see in the middle of this slide. And this model is generated thanks to common question we ask in the survey and the information available uh, on our digital database um, here in the digital behavior. It could be questions related to hobbies, brands you follow, celebrities you like, things you uh, appreciate, uh, etc. We inject this kind of question in the survey, so concretely in the questionnaire, uh, to then really understand um, and target which audience uh, you should activate and how to connect uh, with these people. So next, and we will now talk about the survey and concretely, um, the goal is to have a short and focused mobile questionnaire. Uh, it's all about being focused. Um, we will have in this questionnaire, a, a, um, sorry, a section uh, focused on needs, applying, for example, sensidium metaphors. Uh, this tap into the need to engage respondents uh, into a more intuitive and natural manner. On top of that, uh, we will have some additional behavioral questions, social demo to capture the hard facts. Very important to be focused. Uh, this is not replicating existing questionnaire. This is not repeating question where you already have answer. Uh, this is really a focus uh, to understand needs, motivation, and again, to ask these questions that will help us uh, to create this link uh, between the survey uh, and the behavioral digital data. Back to you, Aurélie. Thank you, Mayan. Very interesting. And the second thing for sure, you know, when you want to connect efficiently with people is to get to know them also regarding their behavior, what they do online. And actually, what we said at Ipsos, we are digital experts, it's because, you know, what set us apart is quite, it's quite interesting. The first thing is about um, Synthesio. We do have at Ipsos, the only research company who has its own social listening platform named Synthesio. The second thing is the fact that we do have a data science team able to develop customized algorithm leveraging the power of the artificial intelligence. And the first thing is regarding the teams. We do have social intelligence inside services team able to provide an in-depth understanding of the consumer generated content, including, you know, when necessary, leveraging the local nuances. And we love data. And we love even more the data hybridization. And when we talk about hybridization, we include the declarative data 
and the behavioral data. Behind declarative data, we're meaning social posts, surveys, reviews, online conversation. And when we talk about behavioral, it's more about what you do. So it's your shopping story, website visits, network browsing, or fan page you like to follow, for instance. And to do all of this, what we do is that we leverage the Facebook data ecosystem, meaning that we are using Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger. And we're doing this leveraging your behavior, the behavior that you have online, you know, what you do on your PC, on your computer, what you do coming from your smartphone, and what you do you know, when you visit websites outside your Facebook page. And this allows us actually to leverage 15,000 behavioral data points. You can imagine, I mean, your audience will have no longer secrets, you know, for your activation plan. We will know uh, what, uh, who they are in terms of socio demo, what they do in terms of media consumption, and any kind of brand engagement they have on, on various set of categories, including e-commerce platform. We will also know that, you know, who you like precisely in terms of actor, actress, and I'm sure Joanne has golden rules to share about this later, and also anything related to your lifestyle, hobbies, and interests in your life. But I think that the best thing probably would be to show you quickly how this works. So, Maya, the floor is yours. Thank you already to give me the opportunity to explain a bit uh, what we did for one of our clients. So you already know that segmentation is more important than ever uh, and even more valuable than ever. But now it's time to enrich the diagnosis. So next, please. Yes. Uh, so before it was great information. Now we integrate uh, social behavioral data. So you know where your segments are. You know what they are doing. You know where to find them. So concretely, you need now you know sorry how to reach those people and optimize your activation plan. So for instance, and this is next page, uh, you will have per segment a very clear vision on their brand preference. Uh, and as Aurélie said, you can multiply the number of brands, the touch points, etc. So you will know very precisely per category uh, which brands they appreciate, they follow, etc. Uh, so you know exactly what they follow, what they like uh, in each segment, and you can activate uh, very accurately each segment in terms of communication. You also have, next please, uh, precious information on media preference. And this is next. Yes, please. Thanks. Uh, so you have very precious information on media preference. So you can map, you can set up a very um, a strategic touch point uh, approach. Um, and concretely, uh, what the client learned from this business case um, is now fully empowered by this new information and the combination of data coming from the survey and digital observation. Before it was maybe hypothesis, guess, etc., or bets even. Now it's really concrete, it's being focused, it's being efficient, and at the end of the day, it will improve uh, the efficiency um, of your investment, so the ROI of your uh, investment. It's no more a hypothesis, it's the right plan, a right plan. Thank you. And actually, when you're talking about media planning, I would like, you know, to talk about optimization, Maya one. I think that, you know, mapping all of this great information and behavioral information across segments, you can identify common territories, like on this example, if you're looking at the lifestyle seekers in blue and the smart formers in green, um, you can really plug them, plug their common territories, and you know how to reach you know how to maximize your media investments by reaching those two segments with the same activation plan, meaning that you will ensure a good ROI of your activation. Of course, you know, when we talk about media plan, this is also including the ambassador, okay? A view on the most relevant ones, but of course, this can be successfully activated under certain golden rules that Joan will reveal today. Joan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Aurélie. Okay, so we have just seen how much important actually it is to get a deep understanding of your targets, but some questions remain, like how to engage them concretely, what type of message to serve nowadays, 
is it still relevant to use traditional celebrities with the rise of social media or even do brand ambassadors always bring value to the brand so let's discover some interesting findings that can help answer those questions so with the rise of online and social media influencers the style of brand communication has evolved and so does the consumer's reaction to it we have recently looked at the impact of the different uh, style of communication on some KPIs. And actually it's interesting to see that testimonial ads can be pretty efficient. And one explanation could be that people are actually more and more exposed to this type of piece to camera content with, for instance, the rise of TikTok, with uh, tutorials, online tutorials, with influencers sharing advice, etc., etc. So testimonial contents are much more popular than they used to be. And it seems that the support from experts, from online peers, so influencers in this field of communication is nowadays a good way to cut through, to build trust and to impact behavior. One first ingredient that makes this testimonial style successful, especially online, is the level of interaction it triggers. So actually, the traditional concept of communication of mass media with one sender, one message, one receiver makes no more sense online. On social media, it's actually a two-way channel where the receiver can also become the sender and can also produce content in favor or against the brand. So in this new world, in this new online scenario, communicating is more demanding for brands. Influencers making testimonials could, in that case, represent a good way to drive more proximity with your audience because people will follow influencers who inspire them and inspiration is likely to generate online engagement. The internet has also change the traditional notion of celebrity. The line between traditional celebrities and social influencers got blurred with social media. The need for proximity and identification has made regular people famous, sometimes even more famous than, uh, than actors or, or singers. And with social media, brands can partner with many different influencers from different sites, from nano influencers to mega influencers to embody the brand. So the individual has become the medium in the sense that brands use influencers to convey their message and to drive impact. And in the end, brands must now consider this new model as part of their global strategy to drive consistent marketing activation with other touch points. But here we are not saying that we have to leave traditional celebrities behind because their voice still adds value to the brand. Celebrities can help increase attention. Here it's a good example showing that most of the online ads that attracted attention in our eye tracking research were actually endorsed by celebrities. We know that one of the most crucial aspects of brand's presence is its visibility and especially online. So using big stars with millions of followers on social media allows brand to get a massive exposure and a broad appeal that you may not have access with smaller social media influencers. So celebrities may be very useful for building brand awareness, for instance, whereas digital influencers who will be closer to your targeted audience are better at driving trust, at creating engagement, and at creating this intimate connection with your audience. So at Ipsos, we believe that both the old school celebrities and the smaller online social media influencers are worth it. They will just meet different brand needs and they will activate different steps of the brand funnel. In any case, when you decide to work with celebrity or uh, smaller influencers, making good use of them is a key. Our experience in, uh, in protesting campaigns here with classic endorsement shows that strong reach is not enough for success. Celebrities can increase attention, 
attention, but the impact on the brand itself tends to be actually below average compared to ads without celebrities. So one of the golden rule uh, is that ambassadors must actually fit the brand to drive positive impact. And a good example of that is from Kelvin Klein that was able to leverage effectively Justin Bieber's fame. So this guy is extremely famous and, and the, the brand took advantage of it for the launch of its underwear campaign a few years ago. So the campaign got a massive reach and a very strong social power. And following this campaign, the brand has reported an increase in its sales. But when brands work with ambassadors, they really have to make sure that the ambassador will create message that is appropriate and safe for the business. Otherwise, uh, it may very much uh, backfire. And here an, an, an example of that, the Hollywood actress Gal Gadot partnered with this uh, mobile phone uh, brand Huawei to promote their new smartphone. She tweeted a video showcasing her new mate. In the video, it was actually the, the, the new smartphone. The new smartphone. Unfortunately, she did so via uh, via an iPhone Twitter app. So the followers, the followers quickly noticed the mistake. It has been shared almost 2,000 times before she had the chance to to take it down. And following this, there was a huge backlash, and people were commenting on the fact that the partnership. Uh, was not genuine, was not authentic, uh, was not authentic, and it has lost completely its impact. So, bottom line, if you had to remind one thing on this chart, is that first, it's critical to choose brand ambassadors that will embrace the brand value and can reinforce them accordingly. And secondly, influencer communication will have greater chance to work if they actually look less like advertising and more like authentic content. But at the end of the day, paying attention to the best fit when choosing your brand ambassadors is important, but having a strong creative is even more important. Strong creative will have the power to change behavior and to drive this business growth. So to evaluate a digital creative impact, currently there are many metrics available in the market, very easy to measure, like the numbers of clicks, the numbers of likes, the numbers of views, etc, etc. However, easy to measure does not mean necessarily important, always important to measure. We do believe at Ipso that the success of a digital campaign depends first on its ability to earn attention and to deliver a positive impact for the brand. To effectively measure this impact, there is a need to combine the right attitudinal and behavioral data. And that's what we do today with our new creative evaluation service. We can test in the right context. We can test if the creative has a strong potential to generate social conversation online, and we can check if the ambassadors fit the brand. And all those elements will nurture our holistic diagnostic. And this holistic diagnostic of your creative can only be possible because we are holistic in the way we evaluate the campaign. We me our measures are actually grounded on a, on a combination of behavioral data and neuroscience that allow us to understand how the creative works as a whole in context and how to optimize it. This type of service can be provided within hours for, for you and it's offered in a wide range of options. So depending on your needs, we can do it together or you can do it yourself via our Ipsos digital platform. I will let now Jean-Pierre take over to wrap up this session and uh, he will also give you the, the key take out of this session. Thank you. Thank you. So indeed, time to um, to wrap up. Well, the first point that we um, uh, try to convey today is to our humble point of view, consumer segmentations are not dead. Um, or to rephrase that it's, it's the right moment to refresh it. 
to, to build a bit on it, um, we hear those comments from time to time uh, to say that segmentation is dead because uh, we have uh, direct access to consumers and micro targeting and so on and so on. But at least also hearing you, our clients, and to us, it remains important to define the who. Uh, because it's about to speak about the design target and how you want to produce or create a product on an R&D standpoint for your um, um, consumers, or it's about um, design your targets uh, to provide really what are the expected trialists, or it's about a question of acquisition, and obviously acquisition goes with which kind of media buying do you want to do. Two, hopefully we've been able as well to, to pass the message that uh, those times have changed and those new capabilities related to AI, related to accessing new and more powerful data, which are uh, much more uh, behavioral than only claimed and attitudinal data, is helping us to provide much more uh, uh, enhanced uh, segmentation work. And as much as we still have clients, of course, who continue to uh, contact us and to say, hey guys, would like to have a need base or an occasion base or a canonical segmentation. This is something that, of course, we can do. This is something which remains valid according, obviously, to your objectives. But really, one of the breakthroughs that has been uh, allowed thanks to uh, this combination of technology and classic research techniques um, is the fact that now we take the best of both worlds, the claimed and the digital behaviors. Three, when it comes to activation, that's also something where uh, we are all conscious that activating a segmentation has never been as easy as one to three. These days, and that was definitely uh, related to the case studies that Aurélie and Marijuana tried to, to pass on, we have the ability to reconnect really uh, all the work that we can create with really where we could find those people, which kind of websites do they visit, which kind of uh, habits do they have, which kind of leisure do they have. And we could probably assume that if they do visit web pages of, I don't know, um, uh, pet food uh, elements or uh, something with some specific sports, they do uh, practice, they do own a pet uh, uh, or they really have a proper interest to it. Four um, and five are in fact related to what uh, Joanne was mentioning to us. It's great to obviously have defined the who. It's great obviously to be able to enhance it and to activate it. But the question remains on uh, some uh, classic communication fundamentals that we believe remain. So uh, Joanne mentioned some elements like uh, cutting through the clutter, um, standing out from the crowd, being remembered, securing a good brand linkage, um, and driving persuasions for your product. So all those KPIs that you are probably used to. But all those objectives are in fact complementing the need to define your who and have the right media plan. So that's why uh, on four, he gave you some examples and would have had tons of other ones. Unfortunately, we cannot share all those because our dear clients uh, buy those surveys with us. But uh, ambassadors and other celebrities uh, can still um, have a pretty uh, clear role. And this uh, dichotomy between mass and targeted um, continues to be quite often a very nice uh, complementary approach. And to conclude, for some of those who are used to um, our, uh, let's call it, uh, mantras um, at Ipsos Creative Excellence, uh, we like to say that context is queen and creativity is king. Uh, this is really um, a way to illustrate it. Uh, we've got lots of evidences that personalization can improve brand outcomes, but only when the ad is seen or remembered. We have also demonstrated that in a cluttered and multi-screens environment where attention span uh, is dropping, as we all know, the context uh, and the content is important as much as the strength of the ad on itself. So that's why really once again, context is queen, really means that we've got some specificities of each and single media. And it's important to understand what is the content which is surrounding our communications, um, whether the communications or ads are skippable after how many seconds, um, and the, the context where consumers are exposed uh, to the communication is obviously influencing them quite significantly. 
And finally, um, Joanne also mentioned this creativity, which is king, um, because we have again tons of evidences that when we have a stronger communication or the return on investment of the communications is maximized, and we have a clear mechanism of success uh, to really understand it. So that's really why the messages and the speakers were today selected related to those two topics, how to retarget the consumers and activate them, and to what kind of content message communication should we pass. So thank you for your time. Um, and now uh, it's probably time to take a few questions because we've been quite effective, which is, uh, which is good news. Um, so uh, probably for Aurélie, uh, or I don't know, Marie-Juan, um, a question is, uh, if we already have an existing segmentation, what can we do? Ah, existing like, uh, like not, uh, not done with Ipsos, you mean? <laughs> or, <laughs> we maybe so. with Ipsos, we don't know. <laughs> that would be a pity, but I mean, we can do a lot of things, of course. I mean, the purpose is to, I mean, I'm also speaking under the control uh, of Marion, but let's say that, for instance, if it's an existing segmentation, probably it was not in including some digital information. So that's why I was, you know, answering, but uh, I am answering. But uh, yes, I mean, the purpose is to refresh the segmentation. So absolutely, we can enrich definitely. I mean, the segments you have already elaborating. Uh, with some digital behaviors. We need to check, uh, of course, the feasibility, but yet this can be done, absolutely. All right, thank you. Um, well, of course, it's a bit unfortunate, but don't worry, we'll be very kind with you, even though you made the, the massive mistake uh, <laughs> to start with us. But, but more seriously, um, um, if I remember well, a recent example, what sounds to me pretty important is to really anticipate how we connect both elements because we need some uh, questions which do bridge uh, what we get from the uh, questionnaire and, and what we get in terms of behaviors and digital elements. Good, so um, another question, uh, probably still for you, Aurélie, is what makes Ipsos better or different than other agencies in this front? Oh, we have plenty of arguments, you know. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I think that what sets us apart, it's really the fact that we do have our own social listening um, platform, you know, that comes to my mind first. I mean, there is no other research company. Uh, I said it and this is absolutely true. Uh, so we are able to, uh, I would say, replicate uh, our knowledge coming from, you know, uh, research expertise to uh, the world of digital, so which which is very good and which is actually what we do with our data science um, science team, uh, who is uh, developing customized algorithm, which is quite unique as well because it's not um, embed in the platform. We do have some great algorithm in the platform, but we do also have this data science uh, scientist team who is developing their own uh, customized algorithm to make sure we are answering in the most relevant way the, the business question coming from our clients. And at last, I think we do have a social intelligence teams dedicated to uh, answer business question, mixing digital um, survey data. So uh, and uh, we are all under uh, the same roof at Hipsus. So I'm working closely with Mario on, on several projects already. So I mean, and, and we, we do have this great experience. So I think I think that that has the, the three or four main arguments I would I would like to answer today. Right, OK. Um, next, so the next ones, probably one or two are for you, John. Um, what has the pandemic changed to the influencer marketing? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good question, GP. Um, I would say that the pandemic has surely disrupted the influencer marketing business, I think, as many other industries and businesses. Uh, but uh, I would say that the changes may be more like an acceleration of pre-existing trends uh, rather than big transformation. So what do I mean by that? 
uh, we, with the pandemic, we, if I recall, I recall, uh, you know, reading an article last month um, talking about, you know, in the UK, influencers can no longer use filters to promote cosmetic and skincare products because they are now considered as misleading. So there is some trends picking up uh, like this unfiltered content and, you know, more transparency and uh, the regulation is taking more and more importance in those uh, social media um, trend. There is also, of course, this rise of uh, of TikTok that I think everybody uh, can uh, can see, and this growing popularity of everyday influencers. Because if you know, if we consider the global context with this pandemic and with this lockdown, most people if not all people have been stuck at home to get through the day, they have been spending more time on, on social media and mm -hmm. they are looking for uh, entertaining content. In this gloomy context, it's it's always good to, to see some uh, entertaining content. And that's where I think the brands uh, may have some interesting opportunities to work with influencers because I think one, one very uh, practical example is like it's very difficult now to travel for uh, for shooting an ad so influencers can provide brands with with very quick and less expensive and easy to produce uh, creative content in the end okay thank you uh, the next one, um, and I don't see many other questions, so um, if you've got other questions, don't hesitate to type them on the chat box. But the next one is at the same time a statement and a question. So the use of celebrities in advertising can be effective to develop a strong emotional bond with consumers. How do you evaluate the emotional component of the advertising? Yes, it's a very important topic for us uh, in creative excellence. We, we, we know that sometimes brand ambassadors uh, are used in advertising as a way to, to build this emotional branding that uh, you know most brands are, are looking for. Uh, we know emotions are important and this has to be uh, taken into account when evaluating a creative and that's what we do. Uh, that's what we do uh, today. We include this non-conscious emotional measures uh, via the webcams uh, as standard in our uh, new uh, creative solution. So basically how it works, we, we, we record the, the facial, all facial expressions of the audience while uh, watching the ad. Uh, and it, it really helps us to understand scene by scene how people are engaging with the creative are engaging with the ambassadors and its message and then what type of emotions the, the campaign as a whole triggers. Thank you. Um, another technical question um, arrived, so that one is probably for you Aurélie. Can you please further explain how you get access to the navigation of the consumers outside the Facebook ecosystem? Mm -hmm. or is information limited to Facebook universe? Thank you. <laughs> um, it's a secret. No, I'm joking. No, 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 no. Uh, I think, um, can you, uh, first of all, I would like to underline the fact that it's uh, all what we do is, of course, in um, in line approved by the, the RGPD law. That's very important. Well, we are not capturing information we should not. Huh? Uh, secondly, to the question, uh, uh, the first thing is really when you have, for instance, WhatsApp on your mobile phone, actually it's collecting a lot of information, what you do, your browsing, any kind of interest you have, etc., etc. So it's coming from the WhatsApp application itself. And secondly, when you go, you know, from your computer, uh, most of all, it, it's capturing uh, the information with a very basic tool that we but that we call cookies so every time you go on a website you know you ask you have been you've been asked to uh, you know to say yes i i want that's okay uh, uh you can you can follow what i do okay so it's, it's basically called cookies so with these two kinds of methods we are collecting information outside the facebook system okay 
Um, two other ones, so let me take at least one last uh, because we still have time. Can you manage this lookalike with existing segmentation? If yes, how? For me again? Oh. <laughs> you can start, Marianne. I don't know if Marianne. you can. You can start, or I will add on top okay, of Okay, so, so the question is with an existing segmentation, how can we do to make sure that we are bridging this? Uh, with uh, with a lookalike, uh, but basically, I mean, what we would do is to look at the different kind of segments that you are already, you know, in your segmentation, looking at the information that you have, and um, find bridges with the fifteen thousand data points that I have in profiler, so that I will make some bridges, making assumption and testing those assumptions uh, in the in the profiler tool. Uh, and make sure that you know the the, the lookalike segments that I have replicated directly in my tool will match, you know, at best what you already have. But the best thing would is and remains the fact that once you are, you know, developing, thinking about the segmentation, you include already questions that will um, um, make easier our life, I would say, and make easier a better match by including questions that we will be able to match automatically in Profiler. And thank you, Aurélie. What, what I would like to add is in case uh, we are not able to build bridges between your existing information and what we can find in our database, etc., uh, we can also refresh your segmentation only using your golden question, so the algorithm to create your segments. And on top of this sh very short questionnaire, it could be like five to seven questions depending on your golden questions. Uh, we will add uh, and ask to consumers the questions that will help us to, to build these bridges. So no worry, we always have a solution. Uh, either we start from what you have or we recreate uh, something uh, light, agile and, and quite fast. Mm, thank you. OK. Um, I guess this is it, so uh, maybe we could move to the closing remarks on the next two pages. So the first one is um, hopefully you find this session uh, interesting and relevant. If so, uh, we have new rendezvous for you and at the end uh, of this month, our creative excellence will speak about Instant Lab and you will have a real life uh, experience if you decide to join where it's really about how to, in a real time, uh, help you to generate early ideas and creative exploration. So all this in one day. And with the fact that uh, next month we'll have the Earth Day, uh, Global Earth Day, um, both Ipsos globally and us, Ipsos in Switzerland, will have uh, two events. Uh, one which will definitely bring a global picture related to what's happening on this one. And the second one, uh, where we'll have somewhat of a, a continuation of the fact that we discussed already during one webinar last year, the sustainability topic, but where we will um, run further uh, considerations like what are the say do gap and the uh, barriers and interventions that we could consider when it comes to sustainability. So hopefully you will join us. And uh, really to conclude on the uh, next and final page, thank you uh, so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. We are eager to um, hear more from you. If you have other questions, we are here to help. Um, you may know us, otherwise we will once again post this, uh, this session uh, on our website. And uh, let's engage all together our dear consumers. Thank you. Thank you.